Is Bloomberg worse than Trump for Democrats? Boy Scouts of America declare bankruptcy. And Rick James is being sued for $50 million. Today on the Diamond K Show. Welcome back to the Diamond K Show. Here on Radio on Fire, we are reporting for the nation I go by the name of Diamond K. Thank you for joining me. Radio on Fire provides the best in breaking news, entertainment, and political stories that matter to you from an independent point of view. This is Radio on Fire, and we are reporting for the nation. It is official. Bloomberg, Mike Bloomberg, that is, has qualified for the Nevada debates that are uh, going to be happening on tomorrow. A lot of people surprised about that. A lot of people not surprised about there about that. There's so much controversy surrounding Michael Bloomberg. Uh, obviously, he is a billionaire, like sixty billion dollars billionaire, um, and uh, he's the former mayor of New York City, three-time mayor. Qualified based on another poll. He needed polling. So they, they wanted him to, to be at a certain percentages uh, on across a number of national polls. And that has happened. So he will be on stage ahead of a primary that is uh, not even going to have his name on the ballot. But he's been taking a unconventional road to this point. The debate on Wednesday will be the ninth contest, but it will be the first time that Mike Bloomberg will take on his four main uh, competitors, including the front runner, Senator Bernie Sanders. Democrats are, uh, you know, his opponents are very excited to have the opportunity to take on uh, Donald Trump. And in order to do that, they feel that they have to uh, tear each other down. (laughs) And uh, Bloomberg is going to join in that fracas. Uh, Former VP Joe Biden, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and former Mayor Pete Buttigieg all in the running. They're going to all be on the stage. Bloomberg is going to be there as well. What does this mean? This means we're going to get the opportunity to see whether or not Bloomberg can hold up well uh, speaking in this type of setting. None of the none of the Democratic candidates are exciting. Uh, Biden, Klobuchar, Warren, Mayor Pete um, or Bloomberg for that matter. What Bloomberg does have going for him is that he is a New York billionaire who seemingly knows how to get in the face of Trump. Trump has spoken about him on numerous occasions. So we're going to have to see that. Now, many people are opposed to Bloomberg on the Democratic side. Bloomberg has been a Republican. Bloomberg has been an Independent. Bloomberg has been a Democrat. Uh, That is what he is now, obviously, a Democrat. Why? Why are so many Democrats opposed to Mike Bloomberg. Many of them argue, I mean, I've heard the people that are that are staunch Bernie supporters argue we cannot have uh, somebody like Bloomberg in. Uh, they, they claim that they hate Trump so much. Many of these Bernie supporters voted for Trump because they hated Hillary so much. So that go, it shows you how misguided things are. Why do they not like Trump? What is the reason? And is someone, you know, you can't have it both ways. So you can't say that you that Trump is represents the evil and you want Trump gone, right? And then on the other hand, when you have someone who has many of the same strengths and weaknesses that Trump has in regards to um, civil rights, in regards to uh, sexism, in regards to many things on his record, he has many of the same challenges that trump has but they get they get confused oh my god i can't support him it's got to be bernie or 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 somebody like bernie right 
You can't pick and choose who's going to defeat the uh, political opponent that you have. It's going to be whoever it's going to be. If it was going to be Bernie, it would have been Bernie last time, right? Bernie can't get it done. Now, it comes down to whether Democrats are willing to get in bed with Mike Bloomberg in order to take out a slimy New York uh, billionaire. You need another slimy New York billionaire. I'm telling you, Bernie Sanders can't do it. Mayor Pete can't do it. Joe Biden can't do it. Amy Klobuchar, she can't do it either. The only choice that Democrats have is Mike Bloomberg. If Mike Bloomberg's record is too bad for you, then deal with Trump. But you can't on one hand say that you want Trump gone, and then Bloomberg comes, he comes unconventionally, and then they say, oh, no, no, that's not right. Uh, We can't deal with Bloomberg, right? Bloomberg has a lot on his record that is terrible. Trump has a lot on his record that is terrible. The difference between Republicans and Democrats in 2020 is that the Republicans are willing to hold their nose and say, yes, Trump has done some things that I don't like. Yes, Trump has done some things that I wouldn't want my kids to do. Yes, Trump has said some things that I don't like. Trump consistently says things that I don't like. But Trump is going to do ultimately some things that I like, and I'm going to take the good with the bad. That's what Republicans are going to say. Democrats are saying they're doing some kind of purity test. Oh, my God, we need somebody who is good and who is pure and, and who's to the left and, and all of these things that are not going to get anything in the general election. In a primary, OK, you can be way far to the left. But in the general election, you're going to need to be able to pull some of these Trump voters, some of these people that were holding their nose. Maybe you can pull them and, and a figure like Bloomberg can do that. Now, let's keep in mind. Bloomberg's record is terrible on many things. Not all, but many. Most. Okay? Most. He's made sexist comments, allegedly. He's made racial comments. And he has, more importantly than that, he has enacted or continued to enact racial uh, things. Racist policies. Defended those racist policies. But Donald Trump has done the same thing. Donald Trump has done the same thing. Ultimately, I think that many in the Democratic Party are going to not support Bloomberg if Bloomberg is uh, the ultimate um, candidate because they're just going to be angry. These people, uh, these Bernie bros, these these Bernie supporters, these staunch far left Democratic, um, uh, you know, party goers are just going to be so angry that they're going to potentially cause Trump to win again. But uh, Bloomberg does have something going for him that uh, no one else has ever had, and that is the fact that he is willing to spend a lot of money, his own money, on his campaign. Which brings me to my next point. Many people are saying that Bloomberg is buying the election. You have Some of his Democratic opponents saying that he's trying to buy the election. You can't buy an election, okay? He can't make the people vote for him, okay? What he can do is run a whole boatload of commercials, which is what he has been doing, and getting his uh, face out there and getting heard. Now, that's not buying the election. That is paying for airtime, be it commercials, be it digital, paying for exposure, But ultimately, that exposure can mean nothing. Ask Tom Steyer, okay? I mean, he's he's paying for a lot of commercials. He doesn't have the money that um, uh, Bloomberg has. He's more along along the lines of what Trump has. But Tom Steyer has paid for a whole lot of commercials. And that hasn't, you know, (laughs) nobody's saying he's trying to buy. I mean, he's buying the election. You can't buy the election. He can't. He's not putting a dollar in people's pockets and say, hey, vote for me. Hey. $5. $5. Hey, vote for me. That's not how he's doing it. He is paying for ads, which is the same thing that the other candidates are doing. He's just buying more. Okay? And he's spending money on a ground game in places that the other candidates are not even running yet. That's not buying the election. That's campaigning. That's campaigning. Uh, so, 
But, you know, many of the Democratic uh, uh, hopefuls have to say something. So they're upset. Uh, Bloomberg is, is in the race and Bloomberg is, um, you know, making a dent, making a, a big dent because he's advertising. Everything's about advertising and getting the name out there and he's doing it. Some people, unlike uh, many people listening to this show, are just getting into this campaign season. Like, they haven't been filing all along like we have. But um, Bloomberg has made a dent, and Bloomberg is going to be on the stage, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So um, you're listening to the Don K Show here on Radio on Fire. Of course, new episodes of the show dropping daily, Radio on Fire. However you're listening to or watching this program, uh, search DJ Diamond K or the Diamond K show. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, like the show, rate the show, and share the program. Uh, we're going to be back in a minute. Let's take a quick break and uh, going to talk about how you can advertise on the Diamond K show. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. Do you have a business, product, or event that you need to promote to men and women ages 23 to 44? If so, Radio on Fire can help you do it with one of our promo packages. Our broadcasts reach over 150,000 people per month. Sponsorship for one or all of our radio programs can include live mentions, social media posting, commercials, and more. Visit RadioOnFire.com slash advertise to find out more about a promo package that fits your needs. Rates start as low as $50. If you want to reach men and women ages 23 to 44, log on now, RadioOnFire.com. Welcome back to the Diamond K Show here on Radio On Fire. Of course, we are reporting for the nation. I go by the name of Diamond K, Radio On Fire, providing the best in breaking news, entertainment, political stories, all that matter to you from an independent point of view. I know many of you are tired of mainstream media spinning things tired of the mainstream media lying to you here at radio on fire we give you the hard-hitting truth and uh, speaking of truth the boy scouts of america have declared bankruptcy you know there have been sex abuse lawsuits filed by thousands of former scouts when i was a young lad young kid coming up Boy Scouts was a big deal. I never was able to participate in the Boy Scouts because my parents wasn't having it. But uh, I knew many people that participated in in the Boy Scouts. Um, It is uh, a nonprofit. The administrators have been battling lawsuits across the country involving victims where they have been, you know, touched and, and violated by these scout leaders and all of this crap. Uh, the bankruptcy filing will put a hold on all of these court cases uh, as the Boy Scouts of America work out a strategy to pay its victims. So there's the thing. They have been convicted of many things. The, here, here's what they claim. The BSA, Boy Scouts of America, cares deeply about all victims of abuse and sincerely apologize to anyone who was harmed during their time scouting. We are outraged that there have been times when individuals took advantage of our programs to harm innocent children. The Boy Scouts of America president, CEO Roger Mosby, said in a statement, while we know nothing can undo the tragic abuse that victims suffered, we believe the Chapter 11 process with the proposed trust structure will provide equitable compensation to all victims while maintaining the BSA's important mission. This piece of crap organization needs to be closed. We are far past, uh, you know, needing... I I mean, you know, back in the day, these people, they would, uh, you know, wear the uniforms, short shorts, go in the woods, pitch a tent, make a fire, all other kind of uh, things that are not necessary right now. There are people in the Midwest or people that are 
heavy in that camp lifestyle, and they can learn those, uh, you know, duties, how to do that kind of stuff. They can learn that from family members. They do not need to go to the Boy Scouts of America to be violated by, uh, you know, some of these sick individuals. An attorney uh, for a group called Abused in Scouting, which represents over 1,800 victims, told ABC News that his clients are expressing relief that their causes will be addressed and the organization's financial holdings will be out in the open. Some of the accusations go back as far as the 1940s. And there had been strong evidence that the nonprofit covered up their knowledge of abuse. And we know we know that to be true. This goes back, they say, to the 1940s. That's my grandmother's generation. And the Boy Scouts have been a big deal for for many years. Many years. Uh, The attorney also said that the organization will likely try to downplay its assets, of course, and argue that it does not control the money or the holdings of local troops. Um, He also said that the attorneys are going to push for more details about their financials. In 2012, more than 14,000 pages of documents Related to the alleged abuse of 1,247 scout leaders, abuse by 1,247 scout leaders, was released as part of the lawsuit filed in Oregon against the Boy Scouts of America. In April, an attorney who represented victims released court documents with testimony from Dr. Janet Warren, who said she was hired by the Boy Scouts of America to evaluate its sex abuse cases. This is crazy. I mean, we're talking about thousands, right? Uh, This one attorney here, this attorney that's part of the group Abuse and Scouting, as I said, representing 1,800 victims. So you have abuses by 1,247 scout leaders. And who knows how many kids, if each one of them just did two abuses, which we know it's more than that, but if it just did two, how many abuses are we talking about? These men, these sick individuals became part of the Boy Scouts of America so they could prey on kids. This organization needs to, one, pay up, two, People need to be criminally prosecuted, and this organization needs to be broken into a million pieces. This is ridiculous. Warren testified that she worked with the scouts in eligible volunteer files to determine that there were 7,819 perpetrators, and she identified 12,000 254 victims over the decades and it's probably more than that this is what she identified it's more than 12,000 more than that now these men have violated these boys and we don't know what effect that it's had on them and their offsprings but it hasn't it isn't something that's good it isn't something that's good and it, it, it is sickening the way that this has been allowed to go on. Boy Scouts of America. Pieces of crap. Pieces of crap. You listen to the Diamond Kate Show here on Radio on Fire. I'm going to take a quick break. Come back in 60 seconds after this. And we are back. Radio on Fire will be streaming the Kobe Bryant and the Gigi Bryant Memorial. Uh, That's going to be going down on February the 24th. Sad day. That's, That's going to be a really, really sad day. 
uh, for many people. There has been a lot of controversial statements made by people who uh, support Kobe Bryant, support his legacy, and many people that do not support Kobe Bryant or have a negative view on his legacy. Uh, Comments made back and forth, but Kobe Bryant and uh, Gianna Bryant, the memorial will take place. February the 24th is Monday, February 24th, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And it will emanate from the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. So let's talk a little bit about that before we get into this last story. The, I mean, there have been a lot of uh, reports on this, and we're going we're to talk about that. Um, Colby Bryant, his 13-year-old child, 13-year-old daughter. Um, the significant uh, significance of the date chosen, it reflects the basketball jersey numbers worn by Colby Bryant, number 24, uh, and Gianna, number 2. Gianna uh, Bryant's jersey was retired by Harbor Day School uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. And... Um, The date for the memorial was finalized with planning and coordination from the city of Los Angeles, Los Angeles Police Department, the L.A. Clippers, who have a game at the Staples Center that evening. Um, And, uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're happy that this is going down. We're happy that, um, it has been, uh, you know, honored these wishes but uh the death the death of Kobe Bryant is 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 something it happened last month and I'm but I'm still um I'm still in shock about it uh, I'm still still in shock about it uh, the NBA over the weekend as I said the, the Kobe's death still hurting many people but uh, over the weekend, the NBA paid their respect to Kobe Bryant as the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, uh, revealed that the name of the All-Star Game MVP award was being changed to the Kobe Bryant MVP award. He had a press conference in Chicago during the All-Star Weekend festivities And uh, they said that no one embodied All-Star more than Kobe Bryant, which led to the change. During Kobe's career, he was chosen for the All-Star game 18 times and won the MVP four times. So over the weekend, Kawhi Leonard won the Kobe Bryant MVP award. And, um, And you have that that uh that going on uh so that was it was a good game it was it was it was a damn good game and um you know i'm happy i'm happy about that but um you know the memorial service as i said going down and uh tickets for that available in ticket masters we have links uh for tickets on radio on fire on radio on fire's uh, facebook page you can get uh, tickets to that um, it is uh, it is like I said it's going to be a really 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 sad affair when anytime I mean a funeral is gonna be sad in general but when you have someone the stature of Kobe Bryant someone that affected people good and bad the way that Kobe Bryant has affected people. When you have a man and his daughter passing at the same time, you know what I mean? It's going to it's going to affect people, and um, you know we're going to watch. Many people are going to be watching from around the world this memorial service for Kobe Bryant, um, and it is it is going to be something that 
probably that L.A. has not seen before in regards uh, to this. I mean, of course, Michael Jackson's funeral uh, comes to mind. Nipsey Hussle's funeral comes to mind. But they're doing this one differently. They're doing this one differently. If you don't have tickets, the L.A. police are asking for you to not, you will not be allowed in the area if you don't have tickets. Just because it's going, it's going to be that, that crazy. The immediate area surrounding the Staples Center, you won't be allowed in that immediate area if you don't have tickets. So if you don't have tickets, don't even go in the area. They're not going to be showing it on the screen. You're not going to be able to see it on the outside like in the past. There's not going to be a procession or anything like that. It's going to be too big of an event. You want tickets? As I said, Ticketmaster has those. You can go to Radio on Fire on Facebook. Uh, to access the link, and that I mean, and that's just what it is. That's just that's how they are uh, carrying things for that event. It's just that's just the way it is. Uh, nothing that can be done about that. Nothing, uh, and, and there's there's a lot of people. Please beware. There are a lot of people trying to uh, fraud people, trying to say that they have tickets, four tickets. There's a there's a, a, a maximum of two two tickets. People are only allowed to purchase two tickets, okay? Uh, and make sure you get, and they're non-transferable, so make sure you get them directly from Ticketmaster. Do not, do not be conned into anything that you see online other than they're coming from Ticketmaster. You're only able to get them from them, and they are non-transferable. So if you want tickets, you got to get them directly. From Ticketmaster. I mean, there's not a there's not a whole lot to that, uh, but I see many people online inquiring about uh, the tickets and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm letting you know how to get them. Kobe Bryant, Gigi Bryant, the memorial of the family did have a private uh, ceremony um, as it relates to the. Um, you know the burial of their loved ones but uh, people are really really um, you know this is one of those things now I'm sure that programs are going to be something that people are going to be distributed online the programs uh, to this and all that kind of stuff um, but um, you know it's, uh, it's all good now let's uh, take a quick break Let's come back uh, with our last story. I, I really, um, I, I just, I have mixed feelings on this uh, next story. Let's take a quick break and let's come back on the Diamond K Show. Do you have a business, product, or event that you need to promote to men and women ages 23 to 44? If so, Radio on Fire can help you do it with one of our promo packages. Our broadcasts reach over 150,000 people per month. Sponsorship for one or all of our radio programs can include live mentions, social media posting, commercials, and more. Visit RadioOnFire.com slash advertise to find out more about a promo package that fits your needs. Rates start as low as $50. If you want to reach men and women ages 23 to 44, log on now. RadioOnFire.com Welcome back. You may Diamond K in here. Radio on Fire reporting for the nation. Radio on Fire providing the best in breaking news, entertainment, political stories that all matter to you from an independent point of view. If you are tired of mainstream media spinning stories, if you're tired of the mainstream media lying to you or telling you half of the story, Radio on Fire is here. Independent journalists. Independent journalists. And we are here giving you the truth. The truth, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it is, it is what it is. But there's no special interest here. The only interest is bringing you true stories, the news. Now, my perspective, I will definitely give you that, but I will also give you the facts. Now, this machine powered, of course, by you, the people. RadioOnFire.com slash join. Exclusive content for members. 
in addition to our free content but it's some exclusive shows some exclusive behind the scenes stuff members merchandise etc radio on fire.com slash join is where you go so lastly lastly the estate of legendary singer Rick James is being sued for $50 million over an alleged incident that took place back in 1979. Now, as we talked about with the Boy Scouts case, uh, you can sue people for stuff that happened in the past. Uh, this one's going to be a little tricky because uh, this case, I mean, uh, 1979, all right. Rick James, legendary singer, who's had problems. He's, he's over the years, when he was alive, he's had problems with substance abuse, with assaulting women. It's not far-fetched. It doesn't mean that this did not happen. I think that it's just going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky, but it needs it needs to be said and investigated as best as possible. Uh, but it's going to be difficult. This is going to be a difficult one to prove. A woman now in her 50s, claims that she was raped by Rick James when she was 15 years old. The unidentified plaintiff says that Rick James raped her while she was staying at a group home in Buffalo, New York, back in 1979. The lawsuit, which was filed late last week, says that James Ambrose Johnson Jr. 1999 Trust which is run by the singer's estate. The suit was filed under the Child's Victims Act, which opened a one-year litigation window for victims who were once blocked by the statute of limitations. So, in this lawsuit, it says that Rick James was visiting a group home to see some adults when he raped this girl, allegedly. She said that he grabbed my hair and pushed my head into the pillow. She said I tried to fight him off, but he told me to shut up and quit moving or I'll cut you. The plaintiff uh, is saying that the incident resulted in psychological issues along with physical and emotional issues. So uh, my heart goes out to her. Now, but I, you know, I'm not saying whether this happened or not. We don't know, but she's saying that it happened. But Rick James is not here. Rick James is not here and has not been here. Rick James was a native of Buffalo, and in 1993, he was convicted of assaulting two women. He served more than two years in prison. Died in L.A. back in 2004, August 6, to be exact, 2004. So uh, we're going to keep you posted on this. This is going to be uh, is one of those things that happens. Uh, every woman or man that comes forward with an accusation does not always is not always telling the truth. Every superstar that is accused of sexual assault or rape is not guilty. Some are, though. Some are. And Rick James was uh, a gifted entertainer who had a lot of problems. He had substance abuse problems. He had an anger problem. He put his hand and was convicted of assaulting two women. So, I I don't know how they're going to prove this, though. I don't know how they're going to prove this um, more than hearsay. Uh, You know, so, um, many people saying, why did he wait so long? What, What did he... What do you hope to get out of this by waiting so long? Talking about Rick James. I like Rick James. Many people saying stuff like that. Just because you like Rick James doesn't mean he's not guilty. Uh, And and what would happen is that the estate would be forced to pay money for, you know, whatever he allegedly did. We'll see about that. We'll definitely see about that. Your man Diamond K, Radio on Fire. Of course, I will be back tomorrow with more of the show. RadioonFire.com slash join is where you go to become a member. Exclusive member content. Exclusive for our members. Of course, you get the free shows. 
but you also get some exclusive shows that are only available to members member merchandise so much more and most importantly you are helping this independent voice continue to do what we do radio on fire your man diamond k i will see you guys tomorrow